the actors in six parts, but this video will focus on parts two to four because they're the most relevant to the work that construction lawyers do. Broadly speaking, this is what each part covers. Number one, an overview of the act. Number two, the new office of the building safety regulator. Number three, a new safety regime for high risk buildings during the design and construction phases. Number four, a new safety regime for higher risk buildings during the occupation phase. Number five, other provisions relating to building safety. And number six, technical issues. One of the key features of the Act is the appointment of the Health and Safety Executive as a new BSR that will have three main regulatory functions. Number one, to oversee the new regulatory regime for higher risk buildings. Number two, to oversee the safety of all buildings. And number three, to encourage greater competence in the built environment industry. At the centre of the new building's safety regime mapped out in the Act is a, more, a new, more stringently regulated regime for the so-called higher risk buildings of which Grenfell Tower would have been one. A key feature of that regime is the creation of a structure of duty holders across the life cycle of higher risk buildings. That structure is based on the principle that the entity that creates a building safety risk should, as far as possible, be responsible for managing that risk. Therefore, when buildings are designed, constructed or refurbished, those involved in the commissioning, design, construction and or refurbishment will have responsibilities for those processes complying with the Act and with building regulations. These duty holders will include those that are the existing main duty holders under the Construction Design and Management Regulations 2015, so i.e. the client, the principal designer, the principal contractor, the designer and the contractor. The Act also creates a new three-stage gateway regime that will ensure that building safety risks are considered at each stage of a high-risk building's design and construction. Furthermore, Part 3 of the Act provides for the creation and maintenance of a so-called golden thread of building safety information so that the right parties have access to the right information at the right times throughout the life cycle of a building to ensure the building is safe. The original design intent and any subsequent changes to it will be captured and preserved and used to support safety improvements. Once construction is complete, this information must be handed over to the new building owner and thereafter the information will be managed by the accountable persons during the occupation stage. The accountable person is the duty holder during the occupation phase of a building. It may be an individual or a partnership or corporate body. The Act places duties on the accountable person, such as the following. Before occupation to register any new building with the BSR that is within the scope of the new regime or register it within a transition period if it's an existing occupied building. To apply to the BSR for a building assessment certificate and the BSR will then issue one if it's satisfied that the accountable person's complying with the statutory obligations placed upon it. And to assess the building safety risks relating to its building, take all reasonable steps to prevent a building safety risk from materialising and limit the severity of any incident that results from such a risk. The accountable person will need to demonstrate how it's meeting its duties via a safety case report, which it will be required to keep up to date. The Act also places statutory obligations on the accountable person to promote a strong partnership with residents. 